Hello friends, this video on adolescence part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction Reproductive phase in humans Adolescence and puberty Changes during puberty Role of hormones during adolescence Secondary sexual characters in males and females Sex determination in humans, hormones, and reproductive health. So in our previous lesson, we have spoken about sexual reproduction in human beings. We saw how human beings give birth to new human beings. So the only mode of reproduction that is possible for human beings is the sexual mode. Because we learned that there are two ways by which living organisms can reproduce. One is sexual and the other one is asexual. So for sexual reproduction, you need two parents. Now in human beings also, you need two organisms to reproduce, one male and one female. So one father and one mother, they together give birth to a baby. In asexual reproduction, just one organism can give birth to new organisms. So asexual mode is not possible in case of human beings. So we have learned a lot of things about uh, the sexual and asexual mode of reproduction in our previous lesson in reproduction in animals. Okay, so now in this lesson, we are going to talk about something more interesting. We are going to focus only on human beings and we will see that when exactly do we know that a human being is capable of reproduction. Is it like a human being can reproduce anytime? Can he reproduce throughout his life? So these are some of the questions which will be answered towards the end of this lesson. Now human life has different phases. So if you look at the life of any human being, whether a male or a female, so your life starts with, but I mean you are a small baby when you are born. So you are a newborn baby. So tiny with all your body parts, extremely tiny. Gradually you start growing up. So you reach an age where maybe you are three to five years old, you play around, you go to school, uh, but at the same time you have all the childish characteristics within you. You again gradually grow old and you become a lady. Then again you further grow old, you reach your 40s and 50s and finally you become old. So that's how the life goes on. So these are the various stages through which every human being passes in his life. So first he is an infant, then he is of school going age, so you can say a school going children, then he reaches an age which is where he is neither a child nor an adult, so something in between. And that age is nothing but adolescence, where you are not, a ch you are neither a child nor an adult. So you are just entering from childhood to adulthood. So in this lesson, we are going to focus on adolescence. And then you gradually become a mature adult. Then this mature adult will further start aging. And here starts your aging and you grow old. So these are the various stages, not only in case of a female, but in case of a male as well. So they also go through the same phases in life. Correct? Now, what we want to see in this lesson is, now there are so many different phases through which a human being passes across or comes across during this lifetime. So during which stage a man or a woman is capable of reproduction? In human beings, we have seen that how the reproduction takes place when the sperm which is uh, released by men, they meet or fuse with the ova which is released by the females and they fuse together to form a zygote. And then the development of the baby takes place inside the body of the woman for nine months after which the baby is delivered. So that's how sexual reproduction happens in case of human beings. So what we want to know is, is a woman capable of carrying a baby throughout his life? Not really. Do you think that a small child like this will be able to carry a baby in its womb? 
not really so there is a specific age group when a woman is capable of reproduction similarly there is a specific age group when a male is capable of producing sperms that means he is capable of reproduction so here in this lesson we are going to focus on what is that phase when a person becomes capable of reproduction so when and that age or that uh, stage of life when a person becomes capable of reproduction so there starts adolescence that means the person is gradually reaching or gradually coming towards his adulthood so the question is when can an organism sexually reproduce now again the entire life of human beings can be divided into three phases irrespective of whether uh, the person is a male or a female so for all human beings you have three phases in his life now in the previous slide i was talking about the stages like as you grow old you reach a different stage altogether depending on your age here i'm talking about phases so phases is a more broader term than stages you'll get to know when i talk about it so the first phase is the juvenile phase what is this juvenile phase it is that phase where maximum growth takes place that means the person grows a lot grows in the sense uh, the size of the person increases his height increases weight increases yeah, his fingers grow as each and every body part grows so that sort of growth takes place a lot but the person cannot reproduce sexually in this phase and this is the first phase of a human being so in this phase falls the kids so they all belong to the juvenile phase like somebody who is just born somebody who is 3 to 5 years old or somebody who is maybe 7 to 8 years old so they all fall under the same category so anybody who is so this phase lasts approximately till the person is less than 10 years old but again it is not necessary that the that this Uh, limit will be exactly same for different individual some individual uh, enter into the next phase a little early some individual enters into the next phase a little late so though that thing depends from person to person but otherwise juvenile phase is the first phase where the organism cannot sex sexually reproduce that means these kids they cannot give birth to young ones so they are not capable of sexual reproduction but during this period there is maximum growth and that is why during this phase you can see noticeable increase in growth of the person so when it, when a baby is born if you weigh that baby it is hardly going to be a kg i mean not a kg but 2 to 3 kgs maximum so that that's the approximate weight of a newborn baby but when you look at a kid who is 3 to 5 years old the weight increases considerably again if you look at a kid who is 9 years old the weight again increases considerably if you look at the size of the person so that also increases very rapidly so this this is the period of maximum growth and that is why uh, the kids are given more nutritious food like they are advised to drink a lot of milk they are advised to eat a lot of fruits so that they can support them in better growth so maximum growth but sexually they can't reproduce so that is the juvenile phase the next phase is the reproductive phase so this is the phase where which comes immediately after juvenile phase and in this phase the person is capable of reproducing sexually so this is the phase so only during this phase people are capable of giving birth to their new ones now within this phase also there are many different stages for example the first stage would be the teenagers but which we commonly call teenagers or adolescents those who are just trying to enter the adulthood they have not yet entered they are about to enter so they are they would be the first category who are adolescents the next category would be those who are mature adults or young adults you can say so they have entered into their adulthood so this would be maybe so if we talk about this maybe these are adolescents or teenagers whatever you call them they are young adults and these are mature adults so if 
I mean, just to get a rough idea, so these adolescents, they would be, their age will be less than 20. So their age would be somewhere around 11 to 19. So that is the age group into which adolescents fall into. Then young adults, they would be greater than 20, but again, they would be less than some, say, 40 years old. But here again, when you say talk about mature adults, so they would be even more than 35 or 40. So in that age group, they would be mature adults. So all these people are capable of reproduction. They can give birth to new babies. And then finally comes the senescent phase. What is the senescent phase? This is the aging phase, which denotes the end of reproductive phase. Again, when a person becomes too old, that person is no more capable of reproduction. So it is, in simple terms, it is called aging. So when you look at your grandparents or great grandparents they are quite old they are maybe more than 50 years old more than 60 or 70 so they all fall into the senescent phase where reproduction is not possible the male and the female they are not capable of reproduction and this phase is also termed as aging so broadly these are the three main phases of a of the life of a human being so what do we learn from this that a human being cannot reproduce throughout their lifetime they are capable of reproduction only during the reproductive phase and this reproductive phase starts roughly from 11 years and it lasts roughly till 45 to 50 years especially for a female this is like the timeline in fact for males also so roughly this is the age limit during which human beings are capable of the reproduction so now what we will talk here is when the changes take place inside the body of a male or a female when reproductive changes start taking place that means when they just start entering into their adolescence so from young from their childhood they enter into adolescence so that at during that time what are the changes that take place uh, in the if that take place physically as well as mentally in an individual so now before we talk about this there is another interesting thing that we should all know now different animals have different capabilities with regards to reproduction like there are certain animals which who are seasonal breeders what do we mean by seasonal that means those organisms which reproduce depending on seasons so they reproduce only at a particular time of the year so they do not reproduce they cannot reproduce any time they want so reproduction is possible based on the season of the year so that's why how you would have heard about seasonal fruits why do we call some fruits as seasonal fruits because those fruits come up only in particular season so similarly these kind of animals they will reproduce only at a specific time of the year for example birds lizards frogs so they all are seasonal breeders on the other hand there are another set of organisms which are continuous breeders that means it doesn't matter which season of the year it is, whether it is summer or winter or rainy season, that doesn't matter. They can reproduce as per their wish. Whenever they want, they can reproduce. So they can reproduce throughout their sexual maturity. It is just that they should be in the reproductive phase of their life. Because if they are not within the reproductive phase, then they are anyways not capable of reproduction. So if they are in the reproductive phase, they can reproduce anytime they want. And one such example is human beings also. Human beings are also continuous breeders. For human beings, they can reproduce anytime they want. It, it, they do not, it doesn't depend on seasons. And other examples are uh, poultry, rabbit, cattle. So they are all continuous breeders. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.